beginning podcast. Uh, right, guys, welcome back. Joined here today by local legend and Swift legend Ross Blaney. Ross, how are you? I'm good, mate. Well, if I'm good. I'm, I feel like I've warmed up. I had my COVID jab yesterday, so oh, for flip's sake. A bit rough onto the collar this morning when I woke up. No sweating today, then. No, God, nothing. I was supposed to go out in the road today with Kirk Sloan and I had the text this morning. I said, ah, oh, it's not going to happen. Uh-huh. What about his up? back? What about his back? I heard he bumped into you at uh, yeah, the physio yeah. the other night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same, same issues. Back back problems for cyclists. I know. He sent me a picture of some I don't know, bowl sort of thing. I thought it was some sort of kinky sex toy, but yeah. he said it was for his back. But I don't really believe him. Well, the girl I go to, she, she actually stands on me, Catherine. She actually uses her feet on, on my back. So, um, yeah. Oh must be a, must be a second thing. What I want to do okay. today is uh before we jump into talking about Swift is I just want to uh, talk a bit about your, your your history in cycling. You've been you're one of the names that uh, is well known in local cycling and even throughout all of Ireland. So if you can throw us back to where it all began, had all began, and um, let us know. Ah, uh, flip. Going back a few years now, I, I just realised how old I really am. But... Yeah. I've seen, uh, who was it, Aaron Walsh got a post on Facebook this morning. It's supposed to be the Anaclone Grand Prix today. Right, okay, right. So it just shows you what we're all up the left, no one knows who you're coming or going. I actually won that race 25 years ago. So that's, that's, I feel really old, I've got great hair to prove it like. But uh, yeah. I've been racing a lot longer than that, believe it or not. I started out when I was, uh, I think we moved to Bangor in the early 90s. Right, okay. My okay. uncle Eric, oh, yeah. Eric Blaney, um, he took me and my dad out for a few spins and I just got the, the bug bit me yeah. from that day. And I start, did my first race as an under 14. In Ball of Money, you can still, yep, on the road. Came third in the first ever race. And I did a lot of mountain biking as a teenager as well, went through school ranks into juniors, and then been at it ever since. And then you did a, did a stint in France, is that not right? On the road then? I did, yeah, yeah. Um, what year was that? 99 at this full season in France racing. I went over there with Stephen Gallagher, uh, Kieran McMahon, who's sadly no longer with us. He got, okay. um, he got taken out in a car crash a few years back. Um, but we spent their season in France racing there, got our eyes open. I knew straight then. away. So what age, yeah, would you yeah. what age would you have been then? Uh, God, what is it? I think it was 19 or 20 when I was over there. Seriously, so, but... 99 was my first season. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Castle, Castle, Castle Park races, you know. Oh, God, let's go back a bit. I remember that uh, well. 99 was when you when you were at your, at your prime, would it have been? It probably was. Um, I, I was a good, I was a good, good under 16, good junior. Uh, I raced, probably at 99 was the last year, probably raced properly. Right. I've, after 99, we came back, I sort of jacked it in for a year, got a proper job and, Okay. Uh, started working again, but then I started making a bit of a comeback the years after, but I was never at the same level that I used okay. to be at. I was always a bit overweight, and still to this day, a lot overweight, but racing a couple of good results, nothing more spectacular like, but uh, uh, like I say, up to from 90, from first year senior up to 99, it's probably my best years. Okay, okay. And then, like, results wise, and uh, as we were talking like achievements, what, what would be memorable? Results that you would have, um, be proud of, to, to look back on. Uh, but coming from the junior ranks, uh, it was quite a good. Uh, my second year junior was quite good. Uh, I think it was ninety. God, I'm trying to think now. Oh, yeah, I'm ninety five, ninety six. It might have been. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I medaled at every discipline at the Irish right, Championships nice. that year. So it was uh, I got a bronze medal in a time trial road race, mountain bike race, and I got a okay. gold medal in the cycle cross that year. So you, you, you'd done a bit and then you went away from the sport and then you came back. There's a lot of guys that sort of just, as a, as juniors, don't you, you don't see them going through the, the, the whole age categories and then coming in the senior. Some of them don't even make it the senior. But you've yeah, just, true. In, in and out, yeah. Yeah, very true. Like I say, after going straight from the junior ranks, went into the senior and it's not like it is these days. Like guys come in, they're thrown in at A3 or A4 level. Like why well, went from junior to senior. You're right. You're yeah. booked into the deep end. I was yeah, in the A1 racing. And yeah. I remember starting, I'd won the Anna Clone GP as a junior in 90, oh God, 95, 96. And the next year I was in the scratch group with all the big boys like yes. Tommy Evans, Davey McCall, yeah. Ian Chivers and all. Uh, but you're you're thrown straight yeah. into the deep end straight away. You wouldn't, like, get, and you wouldn't get away with doing that these days. It's like you know you have no to, no you have to start off at a a three is it? 
and then work your way it is. work your way I think up. It is. Guys you know, are soft these days. There's photos of me. There's, yeah, well, there's photos of me doing my first road race. And like, I was mountain biking at the time. Didn't want to do the road race, but I had to do it because it was Castle Ray. It was, uh -huh. either, it was either that or Marshall. So there's a photo of me standing with a, with a huff, just huffing. And I remember <laughs> in the break, and um, it was actually homework came through, and I wasn't for riding through. And uh -huh. homework, came up, homework came up and says, if you don't go, if you don't start riding through, you're leaving. You're going home in an ambulance. <laughs> And I did a U-turn. I actually went back to the commissar and said to them, and I just put the window up once I said what who it was. So I did a U-turn, came the whole way home, and then realized that no key to get in because my mum and dad were up at the race. Yeah, well, I remember, well, go straight into the scene. You're right, you're right with them guys. Like, there were some legends. Back there was all these yeah. chippers, Connor Henry, Tommy Evans, Davey McCall, yeah. uh, Dennis Hayes, and Bo Graham, they bought a few. And if you start balling about riding through with them, boy, yeah. you get up the heads, you went quick enough, you went... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You sort of listen to what they're saying, and I, I learned a lot from them guys. You, know, I was I was probably a good bit younger than the majority of them guys, but uh, you do yeah. learn. I learned a ropes from a lot of them guys racing. But like you've you've been doing a bit of racing re recently, even on the local scene. Like you've dipped your your toe in the, with the cycle course. You've gave it a go. You were at the the uh, Nuts Corner races as well. So like it's not like you, ha you haven't stopped racing. You're st you're still at it. No, no. Like I said, like I said then back there, I was racing properly. You was training as well, trying to what's my what's with that? The last yeah. so many years, I've just been balling about. I haven't really been training. I've just been riding on Swift. And, said, and people keep asking me, "Oh, what training programs are you doing?" And I was like, yeah. uh, "Group rides and right. races." <laughs> I group do rides. not do training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. you Ten days to, are well over. You have to be realistic about it and sort of say to yourself, right? You know, I have kids. I have a full time job. Um, um, whatever age, you know, and you sort of. If you've done it in the past, you're always sort of looking to try and get that form. I know I do yeah. anyway. You're yeah. sort of going right. I know I've done that in the past. Those are sort of the levels or the numbers that I want to get to, and you have to reframe it. As somebody said to me the other day, but it's like it's a it's a, it is hard held to swallow and sort of go right. You know, I can't do 400 watts for for 20 minutes anymore. And... Yeah, well, like I say, I'm only getting used to all the wattage and so on now. You yeah. say like back then we didn't have anything like that. It was a luxury to have a heart rate monitor 20, yeah, yeah. 30 years ago. But Watts is new to me. I think the, the first sort of um, look into Watts, but when I was in France, we got uh, tested in a lab that year by, uh, I can't remember his name, but he's a team doctor for Laurent Fignon when he won the Tour de, Tour de France yeah, yeah, back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But he was he was uh, the guy who tested us in the lab in Rennes, and that was my first insight into wattage. And to this day, I remember quizzing Stephen Gallagher about this year, but I had no idea what wattage we were putting out back yeah. then. I would love to know. You yeah, know, yeah. back then, and I was oh, the, when I came back on the race in France, like low seventy kilos, like I'm ninety odd kilos now. Yeah, yeah. And I think my FTP is only three hundred odd watts, like. But uh, back, I'd love to know what it was, you know, back in the day. But the, back then, even like a, even a power meter on the bike would have been massive money, like. Yeah, well, I think there was one guy when we were there had a power meter. It was an F, one of the first SRM ones, but yeah, yeah. It, it alone probably weighed more than a whole bloody bike. That's right. You know, it was, I remember, one, I remember getting one like years ago and even the software was terrible you know uh -huh. you have, have the big screen and then you put it on the computer and then you're, yeah you're going right i know what i can sort of do but then you, you couldn't even use it in a, in a race like the even yeah the, on, on the local scene like you couldn't even use numbers in a, in a race anyway like you know i know i know yeah but what, know what, what would have been a good like back in the day what would have been your good like a routine your, oh god your week, you go back to when I, when I left school, I I never took a year out or anything out there. I went straight into working full time, uh, working in the fitness industry. Um, back in the used to well, the old time bumped into Homer. He was he worked in the fitness industry as well. And oh, yeah. He used to even cover classes for me in the YMCA and Wellington Place in Belfast. But I think that's what done me in as well. So I was working full time there, and I was teaching spin classes, uh, yeah, yeah. circuit classes, but. I was teaching about 10, 15 classes a week Seriously. on top of trying maybe riding yeah, 15, yeah. 20 hours a week on the bike. So that's what, that's what my downside was. I, I was always good, but I never had really had any top consistency for guys to keep it going week in, week out. I would get up to a sort of plateau and then and I'd get a chest infection or something stupid like that. And my health really seemed bagged, to let yeah. me down. Yeah, because yeah. I remember uh, was it that year, the 90, 98 through the north, um, the first stage I punctured rolled out his, uh, what is it, Dundonald Ice Bowl, and I punctured, so that yeah, yeah. neutralized zone, dropped the flag, and I was chasing all day on my own, and eventually caught the group after about 50 miles. Yeah. That's how, but then the, the next day was a time trial, so I dallied around that, and then the stage after that was, uh, 
start on his arm, went down the coast, up over a few of the glens. Yeah, yeah. Valley Valley Road and Ocean's Grave and the snow. Yes. And I actually won the stage that year, so I did. So uh, I did, but then straight after that, the, the race was cancelled because of the snow. Oh, I was okay. in the gym the next day at half six in the morning teaching a spin class straight after the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so, digging all over yourself. Yeah, not, not the best recovery, but it's some oh. good results that year. Like 98, it was uh, Big Mo took us over. It was the Commonwealth Game Squad took us over to ride uh, one of the British Premier calendars in England, and I got oh, second yeah. in it. It was a big bunch gallop. Uh, came down to it with a split the bit. There's a group of about 40 of us, but came down to a group sprint. And I was raising because we'd only got given these uh, the, the games bikes, the Terry Dolan's, the green and white ones. Do you remember seeing them about? No, no, no. Uh, they were great bikes back in the day, but eventually I had only got this bike. The gears weren't tuned in or proper or anything, and I couldn't get my foot and bottom sprocket. So it was uh-huh. sitting like a 53 13 or something like that. And there was a guy who rode for Halfords at the time. He was British crit champion, and he beat me by about half a tire and a gallop. And I was in a 13 sprocket. I was like, God, I just remember coming across the line and Big Mo standing the side of the road, screaming at me to go. Mo <laughs> was a, he's a legend, like. He's an he is, he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's a top man, right? Top man. But then after that, there, the year after, 99, I won the Wallace Caldwell. Okay. Uh, yeah. What else? Have I won? won the McCann Cup twice. And these were all sprints, basically, yeah? No, not at all. From the full race of the one, like, I remember there's a uh, banger bike. We used to be two yeah, yeah. years ago, yeah, yeah. a couple of races of one on my own. Um, but I was obviously quite a good sprinter so yeah, yeah. why why try and get away when you know you're gonna yeah when you have, when you have, I, like sprinting's <laughs> never been sprinting's never been my my forte but i've also uh-huh. sort of, i think you have to have well the confidence first of all but even it, it's just the knowledge of when to go and all that sort of stuff like yeah, yeah. yeah. I I I'd, I, rather, I'd rather take off the, take the go before leaving the sprint, yeah, you know? I know what you mean. i know what you mean but again that, having that uh background in off-road racing I find helped me as well over racing yeah. over the years because the amount of races I won just by being crazy, good into yeah, the last yeah. corner. And like I think it was uh, my most memorable win. Uh, probably wasn't the biggest one at the time, but probably most memorable one was uh, I won the first days in McKinley and or mid two thousands or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Took the yellow jersey, but it was like the, they used to have a race up and down the carriageway. Yeah, yeah. And there was like a, a bit of a crit finish in the one point, but. I took off and uh, I got a perfect lead out from Brandon Kirk and Kirk Stone. Yeah, and they yeah. led it up my last kilometre and the whole bunch was one line. And came in the last two corners ago, I just went to the front and just went around it on skates. All sure. the wheels were in the corner and by the finish line, I had four seconds on my own. Flip but it's just pure bike handling, yeah, yeah. you know. I, didn't yeah. have to, I don't think I needed to sprint out of the last corner. It's not a gap. You know, just get into the corner so quickly. Yeah, it's just cool. having that you know, confidence well, and the yeah. ability of your own bike handling helps. The definitely the off road definitely helps even like the ability to go around the corner hold your line and you're sort of able to judge where other people are going to go coming out of corners and that yeah, sort of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. It's yeah. especially in crit racing like you say even when i come back into racing like i race a few yards crits for yourself and so on and yeah, yeah. I, I, I was never as fit as you guys like but i could always hold my own it was there or thereabouts and pulled a few results off here and there just a pure by condo sure, you, you, you won uh, you won one of the races at nuts corner this year didn't you I went last boost so boost so like yeah. I've raced in years and I took yeah. license. I was given an A4 license. What? Well, I'm going to give it a go here. Yeah, yeah. See how it goes. Play the, I rode play the, the system. Yeah, I rode the first race at uh, start of year the Phoenix Grand Prix. My okay, first yeah. race back in, in years, like, and I felt really good in the bunch. And but in the tip is off that bloody hill at the end, instead of the normal flat finish. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna win this hand it up and then it up this up and drag and last about a kilometer and a half and I was like, oh my god, Seriously. legs just fell apart. Yeah, yeah. But then obviously did the your race up in this corner and uh Yeah, we're trying to get them sorted again. I don't know what happened. I got away with uh what is the young Chris Oakley young fellow from Yes, yeah, yeah Chris Oakley and just pure race knowledge won that night because it was oh, like yeah. head win down the Sorry. back straight. I just let him ride in the front and did every lap, and he was beating himself in the headwind, and I was going, I'll just ride easy, but we're downhill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the last two laps, I got rode away from him. <laughs> going out one way, but he liked the hard way at night. That's the mountain bike sort of thing. It's like, right, I, I'm going well here, right? Just just go hard, you know what I mean? Just, just go yeah, as hard as yeah. I can, and then I not think of... The like, obviously, whenever I would even race with Gary, he would, be, he would be saying to me, you know, try to do your turns in the tailwind and all that sort of stuff, and I'd be just be... Uh-huh. 
betting yourself, you know, thinking that you think you're doing the right thing. I'm trying to help everyone, I'm trying to help the break get away. But, I know, I know. Yeah. And then Prater. Like I, I was saying there about like whenever I first started racing, it was the Banker Park races and it's your your uncle Eric. But the, right. the Blaney's seem to have this thing where they like to organize and put back into the sport. You know, Matty yeah, he yeah, he did the, the the North Down GP. He, he organized right. that one year, didn't he? And, and got it he going. Did. And then Ian as well. He seems to be a big figure of organizing races and being in the middle. So he's just seemed to be yeah. there thereabouts of organizing all the time. I know, like a fight on mafia has ever been called by it. <laughs> well, you, you're all well involved with the North Down, aren't you? North- Fuck yeah, yeah. See, my dad was chairman of the club for years, and uh, he was he probably had the club during the Giro. Was the club right, was yeah, yeah. I think it was over 500 members at one stage. You know, my, my dad was he organizing a lot of events yeah, and yeah. so on. So he put, put a lot of effort into it. And Eric as well, the road to our and dad organized yeah. the mountain bike races in Castle Park back in the day right. a lot of guys started off from from there oh geez onwards. yeah yeah the, the soldiers and then I think you actually organized a couple of races yourself it was a club races that's right. yeah, about, yeah yeah that's right yeah I, I ran a, there was a it was one of the sprocket rocket series yeah yeah a, a scheme sorry it was so many weeks and then from that we started doing a, a little club like the PC Glendale Imps we called our yeah. two little muckers right okay uh, yeah. it, it, it ran for a year or so over the, the summer, but then we don't have the facilities like up in the Lady Dixon Park. You know, when you go into yeah. Castle Park and Bangor during the winter, kids with no gears, it just doesn't yeah. work because it's like a mud bath. Like it sort of fell away again, but I had a few races off the back of that as well. And the kids seemed to love it. Yeah, trying to keep in with the council as well and tick all their, their boxes. Yeah, I know, I know. They're a nightmare to work with at times. And then, so tell us this: When did you first get involved with Swift? Then, when did that? When did that all come about? I think you were one of the first people that I heard of or, or like knew about it. I was just racing virtually online. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it must have been right at the back of when Swift started. Like, it was. I think it was a very. It's about four years ago now. But I remember going out in the club run, and there was a guy uh, came out in the summer of us from North Down, Neil Brown, and. You go out and you have to know you look at each other Strava after riding all. Yeah. I remember one day looking at Strava and he had this ride going around this island somewhere in the South Pacific. And I went, that's me. He must be on holiday. Yeah. yeah. And I, I clicked on Google Map and all that. That's the arsehole of nowhere. I'm like, where the hell is this? Down like South Pacific, Blue Australia. I remember messaging him and speaking you on holiday. And he says, no. And what makes you think of that? I said, look, you're, you're Strava there. And you're like, some bloody island. And he goes, oh, no, that's Swift. And I said, what's that? He, he told me about it over coffee out in the bike one time. And I went, oh, I gave that a go. And I did. I took it there. And myself and uh, Gary Neal, who's still doing it as well with us, yeah, yeah. me and him started around the same time. And uh, we get him, I haven't got a clue what we're doing. Like, we jumped down yeah. the road the first race around the London Classic circuit together. Okay. And uh, started in the day category and got dropped straight out of the start. <laughs> like, what the hell is this all about? But uh, and then I started off, I bought this other wee cheap turbo. And a wee 200 quid thing, like with Pro Tour Watts, it was producing by no time. I was winning A races, and then I got called out <laughs> by some American guy, and he started swagging a life out of me. And I was like, What's going on here? Because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of guys, you know, these guys had no clue, and then you realize, okay, fair enough. I'm did you, get, ba- did you get banned? No, I never get banned. I never get no. banned. Just shout it up. But, but, no, I put myself a power meter. And okay. went from went from top A category down to C category. I've been there ever since. From the White House <laughs> to the Shade House overnight. I, exactly. <laughs> oh dear. So no, I always remember like hearing that you were like doing this virtual racing, and then I think I got it maybe three years ago. And I just I remember uh-huh. got the free was you got a month's membership free or whatever. That's I got right. it somehow. Yeah, that's right. And I did it, and like I put myself in as in as a B, so that I had room to go up and room to go down. And I just didn't <laughs> didn't have any. There was no going up. It was all going down. So I just jacked it in after a while. I know. And then, I know. It, t- it it does definitely does take a lot of use. So you need to learn the game. Because a lot yeah. of guys get in. Like you see guys like uh, top riders like Darnell Moore, and he's getting his head kicked in. Like yeah. Guys who aren't as strong in real life, you know, yeah, yeah. It may be down to dodgy terrible. You don't know. But a lot of guys who are just using the game have lower watts per kilo, but are finishing ahead of you know, real strong guys like that. Again, it depends on what you want to put in it. Do you want to, do you want to go and spend five, six hundred, seven hundred pound on a turbo? Yeah, true. As opposed to true. just to you know, if you are going to use it as a as a training tool, or are you going to train for for Swift? 
So uh, no, but it's, it's definitely it's a definitely good event. The way I look at it, I spend, I don't want to have one of the kickers, and it's it's a lot cheaper than gym membership. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, you know, yeah. And I'm out on it over the winter, three four times a week. You know, exactly, it's, yeah. it's fantastic training. So what's, it really is. what's your setup then? What way? What are you using then? I've uh, Apple TV hardwired into the rain router. Yeah, uh, about bloody twenty odd meters length of cable so Come, you, coming in from coming from the house. Do you run, run it out every time you put put it in? Oh, no, just leave it in there. Just, just leave, leave it in. Apple TVs out there. Uh, I've got a wide kicker core, and that, that's it. Basically, get some road bike on it, and away I go. Fans. I've got, yeah, I've got two fans. One couple, at the minute. A couple of pairs of shoes as well. Oh God, I have a, I've got shoes lined up. It's all those <laughs> <laughs> I do, I got the I got the I have an old bike on and I stripped it down. I took the bar tape off all the cables and everything off it. Yeah. And just screwed the front mech on now, so that there's less corrosion now. Because it's it's just it's 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 the graveyard now for this bike. You know what I mean? Like I know. I know. You see now. some horror pictures of guys take off their bar tape and then oh, they're about to fall apart. Yeah, yeah. Like, but I, yeah. I try. I use a I got a I got a rubberized electrical sort of to yeah. self magnetic tape. I put it on the top of the bars first, then put the bar tape on, but it waterproofs your bars. Oh, geez, so awesome. it The sweat can't get through. But then again, you change your bar tape regularly enough and keep a towel over the bars. It's, it's sort of yeah. My happens. wife goes through me, so she does about the kit and stuff, especially after like a Wednesday night where you've been on for half an hour before and then the race where the gravy's really pouring off. And she's like, it's disgusting. I know. Disgusting. I know, I know. Well, I've done what you've done. I've got an old pair of shoes now. I have just a swift pair of shoes. Yeah, that but you need to. You definitely need to. Like, if you do the odd time, during the summer, during the lockdown, there and the heat was uh, atrocious, yeah, yeah. like, but the amount of sweat you lose is phenomenal. I actually need to obviously keep hydrated during it. I actually need to invest in a, in a, in a mat or something for the floor now because it's starting to get stained, so it is. Yeah, well, I actually bought one the other day. Um, I was just in a cheap yoga mat from yeah, one yeah. of the bargain stores or something like that, but it was really sick. Yeah, yeah. And I rode that, but not last, not this week, but the week before on it, and it was too bouncy. Seriously? Every time you a saddle, the flipping bike was going everywhere. Like, oh, this is crap. I have, have to say, out. have to say, um, fair play to you in your finishes. It's um, I, I, I don't <laughs> give it, I don't go that deep, and I realized no one wants to see the video. I was like, geez, like Mark was saying, you were worrying him about it. And I was like, geez, he's going, he's going deep here. And I was like, I don't oh, even get out of the saddle. Like, I think it's my we... avatar doesn't do anything. Ah, or uh, we have the washing machine pulled out in the garage. But decide where I sit. The wife comes out the old time and says, I'm finishing like an event. And she thinks I'm having a bloody heart attack. You okay? You okay? Go, <laughs> give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> She'll be on the live stream, watching the live stream from now. And say, oh, it's just Ross. It's just the, the, the oh, exactly. for the well, finish. No, what the neighbors are thinking. <laughs> so, then, the way, so then you started organizing the, the t- Team Ulster Zwifters then. Um, and how, how did that all come out? It's been about a, like a year in the making now. Yeah, it, it started, oh God, it was, uh, was it the start or middle of 2018? Yeah, yeah. Um, it just basically, I seen, I had a quick look through, through Swift Power, there's all these different teams. I wasn't a member of it, I didn't know anybody else that really Swift Power, the guys in the global clubs and so on. So I just started and invited a few people and it just started growing and growing yeah. and growing and then we got a few regulars and then we started doing our own wee meetups on a Wednesday yeah, yeah. night. They were brilliant, yeah. Yeah, and I say um, at the very start, we're getting 15, 20 people, you know, was, was it a good night? And it started growing. And then yeah. when the lockdown kicked in, it just went boogaloo. There was like you know, the 100 people. And uh, after about two weeks, I was having to keep a waiting list of 20, 30 sure. people. And you're trying to keep it you know, fair, get the regulars come back every week. Yeah, yeah. And you people are, oh, can I join? Can I join? And I'm just going, oh, yeah, Again, you, that's what happens. You, you start organizing, and there's always faults, and you're putting yourself out there. But, you know, yeah. it always yeah. happens no matter what, what you do. There's always somebody going, oh, but I didn't get a go, or whatever, you know, or what this or know, that, you know? know. It's like, but then know, after I, I lost count, uh, myself and Rick Hanna were emailing Swift every week. I think Rick was able to email them three times a day at one stage. <laughs> we Just to keep on them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they eventually bit and came back to him. And uh, they were looking at us to basically you confirm numbers we're getting every week. Okay. And we had to keep a you know, screenshot to many were turning up and blah, blah, blah. And we're showing them the, the waiting list as well. So yeah, yeah. after a few weeks, they said, okay, we'll give you an event. And that's where the, the Wednesday night was created, the official Brilliant. one. And Brilliant. the numbers have been frightening. Yeah. Absolutely frightening. Like I think our first round. Five hundred the other week, yeah. 
yeah, it's five hundred. We've had over, I think we've had over six hundred the odd Wednesday night. But uh, Rick sent me a wee stat, stat the other day. Over the last seven weeks, we've had four thousand plus entries over all the races. Seriously? Yeah, it's, it's, blown, it's, oh, it's blown away. Like it really, I mean, it's really phenomenal. Like somebody was saying to me the other day in the shop, you know, if if lockdown keeps going the way it is and all this, it is going to get a lot bigger. But, yeah. You know, will it take away from, you know. Will the organizers now start looking and going, you know what, we'll just run an e-race or whatever? But uh, I don't know. It has, it has its place. It's definitely, it's more seasonal. Obviously, it's going to be yeah. a lot more busier during the winter. Uh, over the summer, obviously, our league finishes next week. So we're hoping to do uh, some group rides. We need to do a few test events for the, obviously the Tour of the North coming up as well, yeah. the race that we're going to run. So there'll be a ton of different events to try. You know, we're doing um, incorporating a few group rides at different set paces with different leaders. Okay. Uh, with spr sprints through them and so on. Then there'll be a few test races, like a mass start E race, which is what the Tour of North will probably yeah, be. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to try and yeah. we'll incorporate like. What day is the Tour of North then? Good question. So for Easter, so it's Easter Saturday, which is the uh, 30 April, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of April. Yeah, so it four, is. Four weeks in, yeah. Yeah. So it's plenty of time to get training going. Yeah. Really live up. What's that? Tyrrell North KOM jersey in the back yeah, behind your head. There's one there anyway. Is there, is there <laughs> a, vir a virtual one? Well, well, we have asked the question, but Swift are a bit slow coming back on the old emails so they are. Break it down. Sometimes you can overcomplicate it as well, especially well for for your for your sanity, really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to say, we're trying to try to keep it as simple as possible. Like Swift yeah. is a great tool, but it's taken us a while to figure it all out. But uh, the guys behind the scene, I just want to thank them. Yeah. Over the last so many weeks and months oh, yeah. and so on, everybody's on board with things like, yeah, without Rick and Pierce and Doogie and Gareth McBride and Marcus and all the boys behind the scene doing a lot right. of work just to right. get this up and running and promoting yeah, yeah. it and so on, like, it, it wouldn't happen. It yeah, definitely yeah. wouldn't happen. It's not, it's like, not a lot of guys don't, don't show. Yeah, a lot of guys don't see that, that what happens behind the scenes with us, you know, and yeah. it's, it's like all the, the fancy posters and correlating results and so on. Like, yeah, yeah. I think it, the, the first the first race we ran. Uh, myself, Rick, and Pierce were still up uh, after midnight, correlating sure. the results, trying to get our head around Swift Park. Jeez, I thought, I thought <laughs> like at, at one stage there, I was going to run uh, Orangefield. I thought we were going to run Orangefield on Swift. And I was yeah, like, that could be a lot easier. And put you user up there all night. Now, frack that one. Like, ah, no, 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 we're not. No, no, yeah. I do what. Yeah, you yeah. better crack. Go to bloody bed straight after. We're about next day. <laughs> I know because we we have a, we have a, organizing the races now down to fine tea. So we like. There's times where we've run out of light, but like that orange, that orange field race, we were sitting at two o'clock in the afternoon and everything was done. It was like, hmm, what, what's missing here? You know what I mean? I know, it, I know. It's just that it, once you get established, it's the, the new, new. Yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. Yeah, like I said, that orange field was the first one I rode actually. And I borrowed my dad's bike the night before, and I don't think it had seen the light of day in about three years until you rode your race so many years before as well. Seriously? Like, so uh, the, the bottom bracket was hanging out a bit, brakes didn't work. The chain was solid. I'd take the chain off, put a new chain on it the night before the race, and it was set up wrong. I said, ah, just give it a go anyway. <laughs> so, once the lockdown sort of, you have a couple more ideas then for that. Do you have to keep like so many numbers then into those events to, to keep uh, that slot? Or? Not necessarily. They didn't really give us a figure. They just said you need to obviously fill this yeah. event. And like every week we've had like hundreds turning up, yeah, you yeah. know, but. Uh, I think with the ideas we have, you know, running over the summer here, it'll keep it ticking over. Yeah, but yeah. obviously, we do have these numbers all drop down. Yeah. Um, but uh, there, there's loads of guys. Those guys just ride swift alone. You know. Yeah. There's a few guys that in the tuz are, are just swifters. Yeah. They don't even ride outside, so there, there will be like it's, it's a Wednesday night. I'm happy enough. You know, every went during last summer as well, and the summer before, I all swifted for the summer at least once or twice a night anyway. Just getting back from work some night. You know, you don't. Make it back in time. You think, well, I can't be bothered getting out yeah. here. Just going to be an hour and turbo, and it, it, it helps. It does help. I, th I definitely. I, th I think it's even fr from the wife's point of view. She's like, oh, he's not out in his bike. He's out in his gar. He's out in the garage. You know what I mean? Let, let, yeah. him, suffer, let him suffer out there. You know. So, <laughs> so yeah. Fingers crossed that that, that continues and, and uh, goes on to next year and more improvements. What else do you think that Swift sort of could improve on, and what else do you think they sort of need? Oh God! They really need to sort the sandbaggers out. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's it's water. It's a bit. It's frustrating at times. You watch, especially the poor guys. In the, I feel sorry for them guys in the D category. 
And the category did look that as well. Because I think uh, some of the guys, there's too big a jump from yeah. the bottom of a category to the top of a category. Like some guys are going from like D to C and then the guys going from C to B and B to A. Like you're starting off, there's guys maybe putting out five and a half watts per kilo average. And yeah. then some guys are starting at the, the lower limit at age, four watts per kilo. That's a, like a full yeah, yeah. Kilo, a watt per kilo and a half. It's a massive yeah. difference. You yeah. know, yeah. With, where Swift is different. Like outside, you can maybe hang on a lot longer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's more yeah, yeah. efficient. But in Swift, you'd be looking at the last 20 meters of these guys, you know, you're straight out yeah, back. Once, once the tow yeah. bars are off, that's it. Like, that's what I find yeah. out the other night. Yeah, and there's nothing stopping like you get yourself jumping into a B race and just riding around the top of the bars, not even breaking sweat and winning. I've thought, I've thought about that. <laughs> Your name's not Jerry Haver, many times, too. <laughs> no, no, no. What was, he, what was he last week? Sandbaggers are us or something? Or? Sandbag, and then it's three watts blade or something. How was he down last week? Six watts okay. Oh, he was in the shop yesterday and the, uh, he was giving Mark a hard time. He says, we know who you are, don't worry, Jerry. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely, like I remember when I first started, I was, I say I put myself in the B and I wasn't getting any results because I was over, was it overpowered or something they call it? I uh, yeah, watched Brigade a little bump. And then, uh -huh. then it did, I went into A and like the first A race I did, I don't even think I couldn't even start with the group. It's like 420 I watts off the start. And I was like, yeah, geez, yeah. Um, so I know. yeah, it does take a wee while to get, to get used to. Like I wouldn't say I'm, I'm like I'll struggle to win a swift race. I, I've accepted that. But my aim for each swift race is to try, try and finish in the front group. And I sort yeah. of right, I'm happy enough. Didn't finish in the front group at the weekend there or on Wednesday. And it annoyed me. It's like right, okay, uh -huh. just deal with it. You know what I mean? But yeah, some people can get a wee bit too 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 carried away with it. You know. Uh, there's, there's a lot of guys take it very serious like you know yeah. the end of the day is a bit of crack yeah and uh like i say i get emails from guys going like oh why is my name up in results blah blah, blah. and you look at them going like you were 120 seconds or something like that you know like, <laughs> also whenever I, I organize the uh the cross races you know we don't we don't get the time lapse in um yeah it costs money but it's always billy yeah, who's finishing last in the, in the b race wants to know his lap time it's like put a Garmin on and do it yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. Oh, I know, I know. I know. So, you know, go ahead. I know I said the standard of the race in the Wednesday night's been crazy as well. Like, I think that oh, last it? weekend, the two guys, uh, was it Walker and Miller, they yeah. set the Strava record around that course. Oh, seriously, that's crazy. I think he set the standard of riders in Swift and they, they smashed the Strava record around it. So that, that's the standard. Like, I was watching the video back and I think they're putting like, over seven miles per kilo in part of that hill. Seriously, uh, scary like you know. So well, the standard is really high. Yeah, I did. I did a good twenty minute test the other week there, and um, uh -huh. between talking with Mark and that, we've worked out that's my five minute that I need to work on. And as Tommy says, you know, twenty minutes on Swift doesn't matter. You yeah, know, it true. is your one minute. So I've just been this week trying to concentrate on my, my five minute. Jumped on the turbo last night. And says right, I'll, I'll, I'll aim for these numbers. Couldn't even do the twenty minutes that I've done the week before because I'm selling a bag. And then the head goes because you can't do the first five minutes of that. And it's like, right, the, the hell with this, you know? I know, no. It's, I, I get slated all the time and call the sandbagger myself. You know, then I'm down the C category all the way. I'm probably yeah. close, to the, close to B if I lost another few kilos than I do. But yeah, I, well, I still have, I've still got a good sprint and a good one minute par. But anything over that two minute brackets, I just go backwards. So right. some of the big hills during the, the Tour of the North coming up, I'll just be survival mode for me. Just get, get yourself to finish. Yeah. No, no, I'm looking forward to now. I came in from the, the turbo the other night whenever this had all got announced and says to the wife, Ah, yeah, I'm riding it to the north. Didn't even flinch, just went, Aye, on Swift. <laughs> <And I said, laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, so it's four stages then? Um, four stages, two on the first day, and then uh, a hilly stage, a rolly hilly stage on Saturday or Sunday, sorry, and then a, a bloody epic on Monday, Easter Monday. Like. And what's that course? Um, uh, I can't even pronounce the bloody name. It's called Co Cash Cash Quest or something. It's pronounced. Quest. I'm not sure, but there's three climbs, three climbs, and I was looking at. I went through Swift Power the other night and looked at past races on it. Uh -huh. And one of the top Swift, I think he won the Swift Academy a few years ago, uh, an Australian fellow or New Zealand, where he's from. He won the race result I was looking at, but it took him an hour and thirty three minutes. And that's like averaging 340 odd watts. Oh, jeez. Okay. And then I looked at, I looked at a D category rider averaging 2.4. What's for kilo? 
That was like two hours, 40 minutes. Oh, so there's going, to be, there's going to be hand grenades handed out then? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I say the tour, it's going to be a great event. Yeah. We've already had some uh, top riders confirming they're going to race as well. So Brilliant. there's been quite a bit of interest from overseas riders too. For it. So it almost, it always has. Always has attractive yeah. writers, you know. Like, don't don't get me wrong. Like, it's you know, I've seen a couple of comments there. Guys were like, oh, blah blah blah. It's like, yeah, it's not replacing the two in the north, guys. You know, it's no, if you're into your all. Swift, you know what I mean. And if if you if you're missing the two in the north, jump on and do it. You're going to get three days racing. You know what I mean? It's not going to be easy. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. I can yeah. say it was Gary Gary, Gary McKeegan came up with the idea for it. He, he yeah. We have a wee message group of all the guys to help out, and then the Todd team, and he sent a message in, and some of the guys laughed at it, and I was going. Oh, that's quite interesting. And then he came back you? and said, Oh, he said, The guys in the Tour North Committee are well up for this. And I yeah, said, yeah. I don't care. We'll, we'll, we'll stick an email in and see if we can get it. Because trying to get events on Swift can be difficult. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we only have the one event. We're asking for four races four, over three yeah. days. It's quite a big ask. And then uh, Rick sent the email off. And then within a week, we got a pen. Oh, yeah, right. dead on. Not a problem. I was like, Oh, right. Okay. This is all. <laughs> I suppose Joan, Joan was probably delighted whenever you said this. Oh, we can organise this race for you online. She was like, "Yep, work away." I know, I know, I know. We do. Well, Joan Jones obviously happy for to go ahead, but big yeah. ball booth as well. Yeah, yeah. He's been a big pusher for it, and he's getting his ideas. We're, we're trying yeah. to keep it as close to the, the real race. Yeah, yeah. Format. Like you know, having your four, your three if, days with a queen stage and a time trial yeah. in there too. Like really if, you've the tour, if you've ridden the Tour of the North, you always know that there's one one day where it just shakes up GC, like, you know. And oh, like, big time. Yeah, big I've, time. I've ridden, ridden a few where I've come in the Balaminas and, and, and ones and twos, you know what I mean? So this Monday stage sounds, sounds like the Balaminas stage, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I said, there's, there's a race for everyone. I remember one of the years riding through the North. Um, there was a stage, started in Bangor, went down the peninsula. Yeah, yeah. It was only, it was only 40, 49 miles, maybe 50 miles along. And I went, oh, yeah, yeah. we have these... We had these flat stages around the around the peninsula. Yeah, yeah. And uh we started out up the Heidi Road out towards Donagaday and there was a, a Dutch or Belgian team riding that year. And within two miles out the road, they had the whole race in a gutter and the 120 riders, there was 30 riders left in the front That's group at Donagaday. And it, they never came back to the gallery and stayed away the whole race. Like it was a gotten session. Yeah. Absolutely gotten session. The first year I wrote the first year, yeah, the first year I wrote it, um I went around the Arch Peninsula. Um and there was no polka dot. I was going for the polka dot that year, but there was none there. But I was yeah. maybe top five or six in GC because it was over the day before I got in the break. So I went from like the first page to the last page just because I sat in the back of the group thinking of the polka dot, you know. But there wasn't. <laughs> it's just like a free lunch, you know. There's actually yeah, a guy. Yeah. There's actually a guy sitting at the back of the bunch that day and the other diarrhea. Oh, and uh, big, big Jerry was saying to me, "Don't go, don't go behind him." And I was like, "Why?" Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, right down the shorts and really? into the into the wheel and oh geez everywhere. But he was in a bit of a slip, me. I yeah. imagine. So yeah, but you know, I think that's everything really. <laughs> so just keep an eye on uh, keep an eye on the live stream and even the, this podcast. If I get hear any more whispers of what's happening, I'll, I'll try and get on. Um, <laughs> but big thank you to you, Ross, and and the guys behind the scenes organising everything. You've uh, no problem. Help help people through. Well, shall we say lockdown, COVID over the last couple of months. Uh, yeah, anyway. yeah. Uh, yeah, people. very much so. It, it's, it's brought a lot. It's brought a lot of guys to the cycling community, especially the local scene together, and it was kept in yeah. contact too. And actually, it's good banter. Like it literally the, is, literally is what everyone's talking about. Yeah, the, yeah. the Wednesday night races. You know, they got guys in the shop the other day, and the, um, Davy Hobbs and stuff. And he's like, "Oh, the Wednesday night races." It's like, brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's happening. So, um, no, I'm like the joke me. is the big joke, the biggest race in the country now. You know. It, well, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know maybe if you give boys a lot of false hope you know what I mean like these boys are going to be going to some races and be taken off and then going out the back oh, so, well, yeah. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm looking forward to meeting a few boys in real life you just see uh, what sort of yeah, yeah. What, what, what they are putting out in real life it'll be interesting to see it will it will be <laughs> but for, I don't oh, geez, I don't even know what's happening I actually got my license emailed or posted to me yesterday the number uh-huh. so I don't know whether they think there's things going to be happening so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. All the restrictions are action or easing over the next few weeks. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, food off the gas easy. So to sum that up, basically, there's a few more events happening on the Swift, and then there's the Tour of the North, and then hopefully from that. But you will definitely be back next year anyway for another full winter, winter league. Oh anyway. yeah, so the winter league definitely. We'll probably have a summer league as well. There's going to be yeah. a clatter of events coming up, and there's a lot in the pipeline. We're going to start off probably with group rides. 
was one of the few test events before the actual tour on earth. We would test out the, yeah. the settings we're going to use for, uh, we're, we're thinking of adding time bonuses in. I don't know okay. if it's possible yet, uh, just to spice it up, but there'll definitely yeah. be a KOM and there'll definitely be a sprint competition within the race. I could get my, to make it my more fun. I could get yeah, my first program. Yeah. Oh, you could. The second stage was sick. You know, it was that, that climb. It's only a kilometer long. So wow. it's a pure power climb rather than a climber's climb. Yeah, that's what we need. I, I was talking to Jim earlier on. He says if you need commissaries, he'll do, he'll do commissaires as well for you. <laughs> we'll get him in there. No. <laughs> I'm dull right there, I'm anything. No. Hey, Ross, th thank you, mate. That's everything, mate. Cheers. No problem, buddy. Brilliant. Take care. Beginning podcast.